by Shamrock Harkwadash. The Balan is to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalawam to the elect of the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson on how there's a global plan to destroy the Israelites. And that plan ultimately involves the Karagma. Right? It involves that thing that's mentioned in Revelation the 13th chapter and the 16th verse. All right? This is Psalm chapter 64 and verse 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their sword, who wet their tongue like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly they do shoot at him and fear not. And that's talking about how the whole world is ultimately aimed at trying to destroy the Israelites. All right. Psalm chapter 62 and verse 4. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth. But they curse inwardly. And that's how these people are, these fake people, man. If you live if you live around any of these in particular, man, if you live around E, right? If you live around E, you'll know that them people are slippery, man. Right? And you might catch them doing something dodgy around your house or whatever, right? And then when you call them out for it, they'll have the nerve to get an attitude. Or you might hear rumours about how they've been chatting, you chat, trying to chat about you and that, you know? They're, they're, they're scumbags to live around. But then at the same time, if we live around our own people, we've got to deal with a whole other group of problems, man. So right now, as it stands, it's almost better to live around them, which is disgusting as it is to say that. It's almost better to live around them than to live around your own people, you know? As, as disgusting as that truth might be to speak, man. You've got to speak it. This is Psalm chapter 83 and verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And that's why <coughs> when you hear, you hear people talk about the Bible, you'll notice that they try and avoid speaking about the Israelites now. They try and make out like the Israelites don't even exist, you know? Even though there's clearly people in the world that are, where well, there's two groups of people in the world that are claiming to be the Israelites, right? Some that are claiming to be the Israelites by the actual name of being Israelites and the other people are saying that wish thing, you know, that J word, you know, but they're in the land and people are, try, are try, trying to say that we're not them. But then when those people say that they are, they just try and really, like not really mention it, you know, that when they try and say that they, they don't exist anymore. But how come there's so many groups of people then that are claiming to be them then if they don't exist anymore? And if you can't find out who they are, man, then how come those people have managed to say that they are them? <coughs> well, it just shows the hypocrisy of this world that they hate that we say they're them because we are them. So when we say it, it actually carries weight, man. But when everybody else says it, they're like, well, whatever. But when we want to be them, because we are them and we're coming back to our nationality, everyone gets everyone gets bothered, man. And if you if you ever start if you ever see like a person start talking about the Israelites with a with a Christian, you'll see that they try and shut that topic down real quick, man. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about that because there's so many promises mentioned to these people that they they almost know that you have to talk about them, but they don't want to talk about them because they don't know. They ain't got the answers. And they've heard what we've said, but they'd rather that whole nation not exist anymore than it be true that we are those people, man. And let me find this scripture, in fact, in here in Judith. If I hopefully I've got it highlighted because I don't remember where it is exact. But hopefully. The Wadi Hawabar Shami Shai. This is Judith chapter 5 and verse 17. And whilst they sinned not before their God, they prospered because God, because the power that hate of iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And their temple <coughs> and the temple of their God was cast into the ground and their cities were taken by the, en by the enemies. So that's talking about how these other nations know that when we sin against Yahweh, that we get punishment. But when we follow after the ways of Yahweh, then there's nobody, that, there's nobody that can do anything. And that's what verse 17 says. Verse 19. But now they are returned to their God and are come up from the places 
where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem where their sanctuary is and are seated in the hill for it was desolate. Now therefore my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall over and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their power be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. And that's ultimately what's going to happen to all these people, man. <clears throat> but that's from a point back back in times past where they knew that if it was doing the things that Yahweh wanted us to do, then they couldn't do nothing against them. And that's why they've been always consulting amongst themselves on ways and how to destroy us, man. They've been continually doing that and they've tried they've, they've tried so many methods in the past and they've read about all the other methods that have happened right and it's led them to the conclusion that they have to use the karagma that's the only method that they could possibly use to try and destroy us as a nation that's the only method man revelation 13 verse 16 to verse 17 if they could get every single israelite that's alive right now to do that then they could destroy every israelite because they know what the scriptures say about that, right? And they know that they also know what they plan on doing with that if they was to able to defeat Yahweh, which they can't do. But if they was able to defeat Yahweh, they would be able to just make everybody be their slaves continually, man. And nobody would be able to fight against them because they're trying to make a world that involves that karagma by where there's no way out of it, man. And that's why it's pathetic when Israelites say that what the karagma is, is not the karagma, right? That's when it's, it's stupid when people try and say that it's not what we say that it is, right? When we, For the people that say that it's that, that grain of rice thing, you know? That it's that RFID thing or that NFC thing. People that try and say that it's not that, they don't know what they're talking about, man. It's clearly that. That's clearly the highest form of making you conform to what the world says. This is Psalm chapter 2 and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. Right? And what they've set as one of the things that they want, want to do, man, to get rid of them, to destroy the Israelites, is to put that karagma in them, man. If they could get the Israelites to do that, right, then they then they've got them, then they win, and that's why they're disgusted and they're scared when they see the Israelites waking up to who they are, man. Because nobody really ever cares when nobody else is that they're chosen, right? But they've just got a problem when we say it, man. Even though they spend money on a NBA tickets, money on NFL tickets, money on bo money on tickets to go and watch Israelites boxing in the MGM Grand. Right, they spend tickets to watch Israelites playing football, right? To play baseball, to show that we're the chosen. They go to the Olympics and watch the Olympics to watch us show that we're the chosen. Yet they don't want us to openly say it, you know. But they spend all their money that they can spend to watch us do things, to watch us sing like the chosen, and buy albums that we of music that we make. You know, they copy the style that we have. They copy the diet that we have, even though it might be trash. We make a bad diet seem good. We make a degenerate lifestyle. A, e a Edomite will literally try and throw away his high class lifestyle to try and live, live, a, a copy an Israelite where his lifestyle that's degenerate. They try and want to be fogs in the hood, right? But that's a degenerate way of lifestyle. That's how much we're the <coughs> That's how much we're the chosen, man. They'll copy they'll copy Israelites drinking cough syrup, like which is a retarded. But they'll they'll actually copy copy that degenerate way of lifestyle that Israelites do that are in their down state. They'll copy that even though they've got a got the ability to have a way better life. That's how you know that's how much you know that we're the chosen. The Negroes, Latinos, the Native Americans, you know we are, man. They know we are. This is Revelation chapter eleven. And verse 8, and their dead bodies shall, lay in, shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. 
and they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And that's going into the times when we was in hardcore captivity, man. They didn't care, right? They was glorifying because at that point, they was beating our nationality out of us, man. At that point, when we was in that hardcore, brutal slavery, we was getting our, our nationality beat out of us and having a new one placed in us, man. So that we was no longer even thinking about anything to do with being Israelites or thinking about anything righteous and even following any of our customs, right? I mean, we was now following whatever they did. And Esau does things like that, man. They got, they've got these, um, these, these, these programs, these, these different things that they do to people, right? By where they flipping brutalize people to a crazy amount and then replace like they break their personality, man. They fracture their mind, man. And implant, place in whatever type of personality they want to do. And people might think, nah, that could never happen. Nah, that happens, man. That happens. Verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because of these, because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on, dwell on the earth. And that's because when we was in when we was in charge of the earth, they didn't have no power, man. And we was we was we was rebuking them, you know. So ultimately, really, they're getting there, they're getting getting back equal or trying to get back equal. But ultimately, we and us and them ain't equal, so they can never get back equal, man. Because everything that they're doing now, they're gonna have to pay for. Verse eleven, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life. From Yahweh entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them, because now that we're saying that we're Israelites again, and we're coming back to that realization, what can they say? There's literally nothing that these people can say to a person that believes that they're an Israelite that we don't have a response for. They'll call us an N word. Well, we know you're going to say that because that's part of the curses. They say that we're in prisons. At a higher rate, well, of course it's gonna. Of course, that's the case because the Bible said that was gonna be the case. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They're in the prison houses, and of course, we're gonna be in prison the most. When who's the one putting people in prison? Is it not our number one enemy? So who's supposed to be in the prisons the most? It's not about the who's in the prisons the most. <coughs> <coughs> Has not even got nothing to do with who's committing crime the most. Because if it was. We already know would be in the jails the most. Who's in the prison the most has got to do something to do with who's the one that's in charge of arresting people, man, and deciding who goes in prison. And that person is the main enemy of the Israelites that's doing that right now. So, of course, that's going to be the case, man. Yet for all of that, we're still getting beamed up, man. Those Israelites are still getting beamed up. Revelation 11 and 12. And I heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither, and they ascended up into and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. So that's what all these people are getting ready to see. Even after they're gonna use the karagma, which is their main ultimate plan. They've tried they've thought about it, man. They've made a diligent search, they've really sat down and thought about it. And the only way that they've came up with in their mind is the own is the way that Yahweh set for them, for the world that he's gonna use to sift people. Yahweh placed it in their mind to think. Man, what can we do to these people that we ain't tried already? Can we put them into hardcore slavery? We tried that already. They still realised who they were. Um, what else? Can we poison their food? Nah, we tried that already. What else? Can we give them rap music and put drugs in the neighbourhood? We tried that already. They still ended up finding out who they were. So what is it that we're going to use that we can get them and be able to shut down everybody else that's our enemies of the other nations too? They've sat down and thought about it, man. And the only thing that they could come up with was the Karag, man. That's literally the only thing that they could come up with, man. But Yahweh made them do that, though. Yahweh said, this is what you're going to do. They don't know that. They think that the left-hand side demons and spirits that Yahweh made, they think that those work independently of Yahweh. They don't know that those things work for Yahweh. They don't understand that Yahweh made them to deceive people. They don't understand that Yahweh has used those things to deceive Israelites in the past. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 24, man's goings of Yahweh. How can a man then understand his own way? Esau don't really know what he's doing. He thinks he does, but he don't even understand what he's really doing, man. 
he don't understand that there's not one move that he's made in his life that is not leading up to this point right here. There's not been one thing that he's ever did that has not been leading up to what I'm about to read right now. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for your house spoken. And even these vocab Malones and all that, Tyler Baker, um, to, to what Tyler Baker, right? What for some of these, all these other guys, man, that have been scoffing against Israelites over these times, yeah? There ain't nothing that they've ever did in their life that's going to make them escape out of that. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. There's not one thing that they ever did, man. Not one movie. There's a movie out there called um, The Adjustment Bureau, right? And they're trying to, like, keep a man and a woman from being together in the movie, I think, man. And then it keeps failing all the time. But they think that they've been given orders to keep them away from each other. But when you get nearer to the end of the movie, man, they find out that there was a higher level of orders in the movie that ultimately showed that that man and that woman were supposed to be together, but they was, their role was still to try and keep that man and woman from being together, man. Just like how Esau's role has been to try and cast us away from being in the, under that new covenant, man. Because he's still bitter, because he still thinks that he was supposed to be under the new covenant. Yet he hasn't used that ability of him thinking that he's under the new covenant to be like, you know what? Let me let me show you how that he made a mistake and I'm going to be way more righteous than Israel ever could. He ain't did that. <coughs> and he never would do that because that's not what he was made for. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 24. Considerest thou not what his people have spoken, saying, the two families which you have chosen, he have even cast them off. Thus they have despised my people, that they should no more, that they should be no more a nation before them. So they don't want us to be a nation, man. And they've tried all these things to try and stop us from being one. And none of it's worked. And now, the only thing that they've considered in their mind from all their counsels that they've had together is that Karag, man. They've really thought about it diligently, man. They've thought, what can we do, man, to get these people out of here? And they've, they've, that's led them to the Karag, man. But that's really a plan of Yahweh. Because Yahweh wants to use that to decipher which Israelites ain't really the ones that's for him anyway. He wants to show... He wants to use it to show which Israelites are full of shit, really. Yeah? Which Israelites don't really believe like they say they do. That's what Yahweh is going to do, man. He's going to decipher which people really are about the Bible and which people are not about the Bible. Which people really know the name of the Lord. Which people are really hate this world and which people don't. He's going to do that, man. Because the more we like our life, the more ultimately... We're going to want to stay here, man. And we're going to do things to try and keep in this place. And we ain't going to want to let go of this place, man. If we got things that we think we have here. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. And the cause of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a karagma in their right hand or in their forehead. So they want everyone to ultimately take this. With the main goal being to stop them Israelites. Because the Israelites is the only threat. People want to talk about it being China and all of this. Mate, that ain't gonna, they ain't gonna do nothing. They ain't gonna do nothing, man. They'd get destroyed because they, their protector is still another Edomite nation anyway. Russia. So they still wouldn't be the top anyway. Even if, even if they was to try and do things and get up, eventually Russia would be like, man, I'm not really liking how these Moabs are trying to be, think they're equal to us, you know, and they'd just do them over. They'd do that, man. Eventually, that's what would end up happening. It's only the Israelites. Because the Israelites is the nation that Yahweh Shai belongs to. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's the reason why the Israelites is the best nation. Because they have Yahweh Shai that came from them. From there, among their nation, man. That's gonna that's been given. In fact, let me show it. That's been given a kingdom. You know? Let me see if I remember where that scripture is. Is it five? Seven? Five or seven, five, seven. This is Daniel chapter 7 and verse 13. And I saw in the night visions, and behold, 
one like, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him and they was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people and that all people, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting kingdom which shall not be which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So that's the only reason that the Israelites are really the top nation. Because Yahweh Shai comes from him and Yahweh Shai is the one that's been given the earth to rule over man. That's his heritage. And luckily, if you're an Israelite of the elect, you get a joint, you get a portion of that, man. You got some like shares in that, you know. If you are if you're of the elect. And even if you're an Israelite in general, you've just got a lesser share, you know. But ultimately this lesson was about how these nations, man, they've like they've tried, they've thought about it, man. They've really sat down and thought about it and they thought, you know what? What can we do to these people to really shut them down, man? Because we don't I don't like them. That's what they've said, man. They said we don't I don't like them. In fact, let me show it, man. Let me show the kind of ways that they've been talking. Wisdom of Solomon chapter two and verse eleven. Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Now, and modern day where word of saying that is, if it bleeds, I can kill it, man. Yeah? If, if I can take anything down with a weapon, I'm doing it. And I don't care about what you're talking about regarding nothing godly or none of that. Because if you can't take me down physically, that don't mean nothing. Because that's ultimately kind of true, to be fair. If Yahweh, if when Yahweh Shai came back, Esau was stronger than him. You think Yahweh, you think Esau is going to repent? He wouldn't repent. But when Yahweh Shai sees the power that Yahweh Shai is, when so like when Esau sees the power that Yahweh Shai is working with, he's going to be become feeble in that day, man. And he's going to realize that the power that he thought he had was nothing. And that's why on earth there ain't nobody that can defeat Esau, man. And people think that there is. They ain't though. They isn't, but some people think that they is, but they ain't. Let our strength be the law of justice, but that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. And what do they spend most of their money on? <coughs> is it not weapons? Is that not the reason why the average American that glorifies in the in the wealth of America get is proud? And why they think that they, their society is never going to fall down? And why they put all their trust in that place? Verse 12, let us lie and wait for the righteous because he's not for our turn and he's clean contrary to our doings. He, up, he upbraideth us with our offending the law and objective to our infamy, the transgressions of our ed education. He professeth to have the knowledge of God and he calleth himself the child of the Lord who is made to reprove our thoughts. So they don't like that we are opposite to them in every way and that we rebuke what they're about, man. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounceth the end of the just to be blessed and make of his boast that God is his father. They don't like that either. They don't like that we talk like that either, right? Let's get, let me jump down. In fact, let me carry on reading it like it is. Verse 17, let us see if his words be true. Let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. So they've sat down and they thought, you know what, man? They're talking all this, yeah? Right, we've read, we've read their Bible and we've heard the things that they say, right? Let's see if what they're saying is true then. Since they think that, yeah, and since they're saying all this stuff about us, let's see what's what's stronger, our strength or their God. That's what they're thinking, man. And they're going to try and test the waters with it. They already do test the waters, man. Whenever they get an Israelite in one of their underground weird old places that they be doing all this madness that you hear rumours about, right, they test it there. They're like, okay, so this is an Israelite, right? Well, let me do what I'm about to do right now. And if... If their God exists, he'll come and help him then surely. And when they do it and they see that Yahweh doesn't help or, do, or or it doesn't appear that Yahweh's helped, they say, well, obviously what they're talking about ain't true. And they're gradually getting more and more bold in their pride to where they're trying to set the stage to where Yahweh has to start performing miracles to take them down. And Yahweh's going to oblige them, man. He's going to send his son. They're trying to make it to where Yahweh has to show himself to them, man. That's how disgusting these people are. They want him to, they almost want him to show himself, himself to them, man. 
They want to see him, but they don't want to see him at the same time. Let us see if his words be true. Let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. You see what I mean? They want, they're, they're trying to make the world be so like tragic for the people living on it. That if Yahweh existed, that he would have to show himself. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Because when World War Three jumps off and the world going back and forth and there's all this madness going on and then the nations take it to that final point of no return by where they shoot those ICBMs, right? That's when Yahweh is going to send Yahweh Shai, man. And that's when that moment that Yahweh Shai has been waiting for to really get his hands on the people that are on this earth, man, that have disrespected him and not even never meant neither mind that for a second, disrespected his father who he loves more than any other Israelite ever could love, man, because he's the only Israelite that ever truly listened completely to his father, you know? He loves Yahweh way more than we ever could love him, man. He was obedient way higher to a level than a level that we ever was, you know? He never did anything wrong to what, to what against what Yahweh wanted him to do in his lifetime as Yahweh Shai. <coughs> Verse 19, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us condemn him with a shameful death for by his own saying he shall be respected. Such things did they imagine and were deceived for their own wickedness have blinded them. So ultimately, their plan to try and take us down with that karogma is not going to work but they're going to think it's working though and that's their ultimate plan to try and destroy the Israelites man that is the only thing that they've came to the conclusion that could work that right there is the only only lo so so called logical conclusion that they thought of man they've really sat down and they've been like you know what what can we do and they've had councils together and they came up with that. But really, that was not what that was not their conclusion. That was Yahweh's conclusion. Millions <laughs> way before any nation was even made. They thought about this. You see? I was gonna almost said millions. I ain't gonna say none of that millions of year about years ago in madness that they be talking about. Before any nation existed, Yahweh knew that he was gonna make them do that. And that's why it's hilarious. That they think that they're doing something against the Lord, man. I'm going to end the lesson there. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Rakaq Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalawam to the elected nation of Israel. Shalawam.